Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Happy Productive Podcast. And we are talking productivity today with my guest, Eric Fisher. Eric is the producer and host of the Beyond the To-Do List podcast, and he's been doing that for over 10 years. He has talked with productivity experts from far and wide, and they ha- where they share how they implement all of their amazing productivity strategies. And so really, he's the guy, you guys. I got him. He's here to talk about productivity today. So Eric, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jennifer. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you talk with all the productivity gurus and experts. And so of course, my first question is this. What do you feel like are some of your top, top, top productivity strategies because you know we're all trying to do more in less time these days so what do you feel like are some of the best productivity strategies that you've heard well this one's going to sound counterintuitive but choose less to do and do less things (laughs) (laughs) Uh, when we have the works all gummed up with you know again the show's called beyond the to-do list because that to-do list goes on and on and on and on um Actually, actually shortening that to-do list, actually compartmentalizing, actually saying, no, these are the things that are most important, and I'm going to make specific time for them, either based on uh, my experience, trumping estimation of how long I think it's going to take, um, and knowing myself, which that's another, self-awareness is another one we'll get to in a second. But I just say, choose less to do, because then when you get the less done, you still have all that extra time. You know, so (laughs) that's that's my opening right there, at least. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm seeing this in my own business right now because we actually just let go of some things. And with our coaching package, we we basically are like, this is it. Like we are just going to focus on this one package and delivering delivering that package to our highest and best ability. And it was kind of crazy, the shift that it had and just not just my productivity, but the productivity of my whole team when we're like, this is what we're doing and that's it. And um, it was really, really amazing to, to seriously, I, f- I feel like now we can do more by actually committing to do less. That's exactly right. I mean, and and this is where, you know, the 80-20 rule comes in because of the 100% of the things you're doing, 80% of it is probably not moving the needle at all. So uh, this is also where that word or phrase, I should say, it's two words, self-aware. If you hyphenate it, it's one word. Self-awareness, self-aware. If you're aware of what you're spending your time on, if you're aware of what your output is going towards and you know which 20% is the 20% that matters most, it can start to be easier to... Uh, automate or delegate or even just cross off the list completely do question do we even need to be doing this of that other 80 percent yeah and I think you hit on the self-awareness piece of that because what I see is so many and I've experienced so many times where we're just so caught up in the busy 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 I need to get up today and I got to do 500 things I fall into bed and then I get to get up tomorrow and do the same thing over again. And I think we lose a little bit of that self-awareness of really looking at the things that we are doing in a day. And so how do you help people who are kind of caught up in that hamster wheel to kind of get out of it and start to bring a little bit more self-awareness into their day and where their time is going? Well, that's the first thing to do is you you have to, and and this is, again, counterintuitive. And even, you know, some people are, some people are like, I already have a full day, a full calendar, a full to-do list, a list of things that I've got to do. I don't have extra time to then be monitoring what I'm doing and watching myself and marking down what I'm doing, how long I'm spending on it, et cetera, et cetera. This is where some tools come in that make it easy, like uh, Toggle. I think it's T-O-G-G dot L or T-O-G dot G-L, one of those. I forget how it's spelled. It's one of those internet company names that can be spelled a million different ways that you you would never think of by hearing it. Um, But you can just press a button and when you start something or stop something, and you can even automate it to a certain extent, um, or even just have, go analog, have a pad and a paper, a legal pad and a pen next to you and just say, okay, I did email for an hour or I did this for an hour, you know, and, and it, again, here's the thing. You're not you're not looking to micromanage yourself here. You're looking to take a pulse. You're, you're looking to see um, 
with this time tracking and you can, I would say you don't want to do it just one day. You want to properly do a week, an average week, get some good data to look at and see if you can figure out like by looking at that data, Oh, you know what? I thought I was spending way less time on insert thing here. I was surprised to find it. It's kind of like when, uh, recently year, a couple of years now, I guess Apple came out with the screen time stuff and it would give you, a, I get a report every Sunday morning of how much time I spent on my phone and whether it was up or down. And it's like, Ooh, I don't, you get a little freaked out when you look at it. That's supposed to happen here. But once you do have actual data, you can then look at that and say, well, okay, even if I feel like that's a worthwhile thing and I'm spending a lot more time on it than I should, how can I streamline? How can I, and this is where you get into the, the consulting and the coaching and the, whether it's through yourself or someone else or a mastermind or whatever, this is where you start to do that. I mean, this is what you would do if, you know, if you're, if you're, um, uh, say a kid was like, oh man, I didn't have time to do that, finish that report last night. Okay, well, you've been playing video games since you got home from school till dinner and from dinner till bed. So it's not that you didn't have time, it's that it was be busy being used by something else. And now be kind about it to yourself and and just gather that data without judgment, just gather the data, do a week, do two weeks, and honestly, I think this is something that needs to be done once a quarter or at least once every six months. Yeah, I agree completely. And it's really about taking ownership because it's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm too busy to do that. But when you really take ownership of it and you really want to change it, I agree completely. You really need that data to look at and say, wait, where is my time actually going? How long is it taking me to do these different tasks you know, throughout my day? And I think it's really, really powerful when you then have some real data to look at and analyze. And then from there, you can determine what your next steps are. Yeah, exactly. You can't really do anything without data. You're guessing. And, you know, you could guess and you can adjust and see if you feel any better, but that you may feel better momentarily, but not long run, uh, get out of this hamster wheel, like you said, of, um, you know, overload and overwhelm and moving towards being burnt out. Yeah. Eric, I'm curious, like, how did you fall into this space? How did you come to be doing this work and interviewing so many productivity experts? Oh, gosh. Well, let's take a, a long story and make it short and say, uh, I struggled with ADHD for a very long time into adult life without knowing and without being diagnosed. Uh, summer 2005 coincided with uh, me being diagnosed and trying some medication, not liking the side effects and kind of then saying, well, I'm going to lean on my systems and all that kind of good stuff. So I was already in the, the I wasn't really thinking of it as, oh, I'm productivity obsessed because I, I actually still don't like to think that I'm product, productivity obsessed now. It's a means to an end. But that same summer was also the summer that iTunes by Apple, as it was known back then, uh, added podcasting to iTunes. And I started, I was like, wait, what? This is, I got up to use the bathroom and get a coffee refresh at my data entry job when I was just listening to music. And suddenly I could listen to and not just be entertained, but um, encouraged and educated through basically TiVo for radio. And I was instantly hooked and have been ever since. And so flash forward, you know, multiple years to 20, August, 2012, and I started a show I had been co-hosting on other shows previously. This was my new show, just this, just beyond the to-do list. And uh, yeah, it's it's been that way for now 11, it's now 11 years. Crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my goodness. And so, okay, so here's a question for you. Now, why am I so unmotivated on a Monday to work? <laughs> So I have read that studies have shown that our most productive day is Tuesdays. And I find that my Tuesday is actually a really productive day. Monday, I always feel a little stuck. I'm just like kind of having to push. I get work done, but I kind of have to push. But usually by Tuesday, like I am in the groove and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are my most productive days. Do you hear this? Um, I'm just curious, like, is this a real thing? What do you, what do you know on the down low of like Monday, not really being our most productive day? 
Well, I'll say it's true probably for a lot of people, but I'm basing that on what you just said and my own experience myself aligning with that. But what I will say is there is a way to be productive on Monday. And again, it goes back to reducing not just maybe the load of what you do, but the expectation of what you do. Because half of why we don't feel productive is because, again, we think we can do so much more and check so many men, you know, so many more things off than we can or will or should do that day on a Monday. And the thing is, is like, part of it is Friday passing the baton to your future self and setting yourself up for Monday on a Friday. And I know Friday, you're like, I'm already ready for the weekend. Well, with rhythm and habits and routines and workflows, you can do that. You can take, you know, set aside a half hour and say, okay, what do I need to do for Monday to be um, you know, I drop in and just run. The other thing is, is maybe that's not what you need to do on a Monday. Maybe you need to question about which days you're doing which things and, you know, have themed actual themed days and just say, no, Monday, I'm literally just doing admin stuff. And it's not I'm not trying to be creative. I'm just making sure there's no fires to put out. I'm setting stuff up for Tuesday. And if Tuesday's your most productive day and Monday is not, and you set yourself up for Tuesday, on Monday. Is that not being productive? I think, I think it is. I think you're being productive in a certain way. So there's different, again, there's different levels or different perceptions, different perspectives on what being productive actually means. And even when you're not doing things, productive means, you know, you're, you're, in other words, you're setting out to do and accomplishing the thing you said you were going to do. Broken commitments is the key. When we don't feel like we're actually getting done all the things we said we were going to do. We're not just setting ourselves up for failure in terms of the long list of things that we don't do. It's then the after effects of not getting that done in terms of our psyche and our emotions, our heart, our, our confidence, in other words. Yeah, I think you hit on something so important there of keeping those commitments to ourselves. And I found that, at least for me personally, Monday has just, uh, it, I, I show up, I get some things done, but I notice that like certain things I'm doing, I know that I'm like, tomorrow my brain's going to work better and I'm going to be able to cook right through this. But today I'm really having to like push, push hard to try to get it done. And I don't feel like I'm doing my best work. So I actually change my work schedule so that Mondays are intentionally half days where I'm working but I'm not like full out, like my client work starts Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. And that's really where I'm in my groove. I've kind of like dipped a toe in that water back on Monday, gotten some things done, but it's not necessarily my best work. And so I save that for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays with my clients. But I think that, you know, if you're listening to this, you guys, and you find that you're just, you're packing your Monday, but you, maybe you're not as productive on Monday. That's what I found. I just changed my schedule. So that way, when my brain is functioning, I'm doing more of that higher, higher functioning work. And it, it, it's nice because I feel like I give, I, I can give myself a little more permission that like it's Monday, we're just dipping a toe. We're just like getting the engine warmed up because when Tuesday hits, look out, I know I'm going to be back in that groove again. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's, it, it's a flip in perspective. It's a flip in your perception of what that is and, and how it feels. And again, I, I can't stress this enough. You you either pack your Monday and then carry it all over to the next day and the next day and the next day, or you just be, you know, just get better at distributing things out, not just by amount of time it's going to take or what mood you might think you may be in on Wednesday afternoon. No, it's, yeah. it's again, and this is where you go back to that self-awareness and that time tracking to where you can kind of say, oh, no, I know. It, by the way, it's not just about what you're doing and when and how long you're taking it. You can add some other variables into this data. You can say, how did I feel? Or did I feel motivated? Like, you know, at, and so you can kind of catch which times a day are best for certain types of tasks or your attention or your focus. Having that variable in there as well helps you to say, oh, you know what? I'm most creative on Wednesday morning because I've kind of gotten through a, a bulk of stuff. And I don't have meetings at that time for whatever reason. And I just feel free to ideate 
and you can then set it up to where you're not interrupted and you can use that time for creative. And that's your, you know, your chunk of that or something. Again, this is all circumstantial. It's going to be different for everybody. There's no silver bullet here, but what it does do it is it, if I can, if I can stress anything enough, it's that you have the freedom for the most part, you have a cert, you have a very high percentage of agency about your workflow and your work life. And most of us don't think we do. You do figure out what percentage that is and then lean into that and make changes based on data. Yeah, absolutely. I I have played around with this for years. Obviously I have my planner, best planner ever. And when you create a planner and then you start helping people use it and you coach a lot of business owners on their productivity, you learn a lot about productivity. And one of the things that I played around with was in my schedule of starting to like group things together. So for example, like client calls. I try to group client calls so that I can go client, client, client. But then my meetings where I'm running my company, I try to group those together too. And so it's nice because my brain doesn't have to switch back and forth and go from, um, uh, you know, our internal marketing meeting to helping a client to back to internal. Um, and it, it, I don't know, it just really seemed to help productivity when I would stack similar things together. And so I'm just sharing this with you guys because you do have to experiment and kind of play around with it and see, you know, at what point do the of the week do you get like, hey, I put in, you know, 30 hour week and that I'm at my max, a 60 hour week and I'm at my max. Like, at what point do you get to where it's like, hey, you know what, this is kind of where I start to really lose productivity and I'm just grinding away on hours. But I think that people kind of need permission to really experiment and play around with some different things and then figure out what works. That's exactly right. And and so you can't do that without, you know, you, you I mean, here's the thing. You can do it without the data. You can move some things around. You can change it up. You can try different things. You know, it, it's like going to a restaurant and saying, you know, I get I get the uh, the tacos every time. This time I'm going to I'm going to get the burger and just see how I feel. You can do that. Um, Try something on, see how it feels. But again, I, you got to do what you got to do the best way that it works for you. And so, again, I'm not trying to lock anybody in, but I'm just saying gather some data. It, it helps. Yeah. I'm curious, like with all of the folks that you speak with on your podcast, was there a, a certain strategy or that was the most surprising, like the most shocking, the most surprising or the craziest productivity strategy that you've heard? Oh, gosh. Well, I've had a couple different people on who've try experimented with a, with a lot of different things. Um, this one might be kind of crazy, though people who are maybe older like me might rem be reminded of this, where they tried to, to sleep like Da Vinci, which was something that Kramer on Seinfeld did, where he'd sleep like... <laughs> two hours at a time or a half hour at a time and then be back up again or just intermittent sleep. And it's like, Ooh, that's not how, I mean, he basically said, okay, this doesn't work. So I'm done. Um, which is what happened in the show as well. Uh, that's one of the crazy ones. I think that, um, honestly, I think one of the, one of the biggest things is, um, and this, I mean, it's not so crazy, but it starts out being crazy is I think a lot of people are forcing themselves into a, um, oh, what is it called? A uh, chronotype, excuse me. <clears throat> a lot of people are forcing themselves into a chronotype that's not their own. What a chronotype is, is, you know, we've heard the term early bird or um, night owl. There's two other types that are not, um, you know, that extreme. But I think a lot of people are forcing themselves into, oh no, if I've got to, if I'm going to get be productive, I got to get up at four o'clock. No, no, you don't have to do that. You don't even have to get up at six. You could get up when you need to get up. You can get up at seven or eight if that's your chronotype. And by, again, self awareness, this is another one of those things you take your pulse and try different things. Um, that's one of the things I, I think I hear people talk about having to stay up, you know, get up early, stay up late, hustle in the margins, all these kinds of things. You don't have to, you just need to work back when it's best for you. So I know that's that maybe not as shocking, but I find that a lot of people just do not do their best work because they're not doing work at the right time. Yeah, no, it makes so much sense. I am an early bird and I find that my brain is just alive in the mornings, but 
to get me like you don't want to talk to me at like six o'clock or seven o'clock and you sure don't want to talk to me after nine because I am in bed and asleep and so for all my night owls who you're like I've, I've had clients who are like you know at 11 a 11 p.m like I'm just starting to wake up and get rolling for the day and so I, I do think it is so important to own what's best for you like just because mornings might work for me doesn't mean that they're going to work the best for you. And that if you do track that data and really look at it and give yourself permission to find, you know, a, a time management, a schedule that actually works in, in parallel and in flow with who you are, right. Instead of trying to be what you're not. Yeah, exactly. Right. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right, Eric. So first of all, thank you so much for being here with me today. Any final thoughts on a productivity, anything, final thoughts on productivity that you want to leave our amazing audience with? Oh, it's a loaded question. I, I just, again, <laughs> I, I guess I want to reiterate, you have more ability to change and or have agency and be in charge of what you do with your life than you think you do. Or maybe you think you do, but like you're not thinking about it in the right way. Just hit a reset. Do do one of these time tracking sessions for, you know, good a good week or two and track all those variables. Because if you're again, if you're not tracking, if you're not thinking and you're just going day to day to day, moving stuff from the list to the next day and so on, then it's time for a change. Yeah, it absolutely is perfect words to end our episode today of the happy productive podcast eric where can people find you if they want to learn more about your show yeah well the easiest way to find it is to just go straight to beyond the to do list.com that's where you can find how to listen to it in your preferred podcast player app of choice uh that's also where you can hit search and look for certain topics or guest names and find all of the back catalog there's like 500 plus episodes Wow, that is a lot of episodes. Fantastic. And you guys, we will put Eric's information in the show notes as well today. Thank you so very much for being here with me today, Eric. And for all of you guys, hopefully you picked up something really good. Data, 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 right? Just just take a week or two and, and do the work. Bring the self-awareness in and hopefully it'll really help you make a powerful shift in your productivity. All right, that's it. Eric, thank you so much. You guys get out there and have a happy, productive day. Bye, y'all.